Hi, I am here again at your service. Oh, how I love teaching math. I know, I always say that. We have lesson 4.5 in front of us. Yeah, look at our topic. Estimate quotients using compatible numbers. Ooh, sounds like that might be a challenge. Estimate, we know about estimate, right? It's all about making that best guess at maybe a number. We just find the about number I sometimes refer to it as. We also have quotients, which we know is the answer to a division problem. Compatible. I love the word compatible. It's when people get along. When people are compatible, it means that they're, they get along easy. Let's write a few of these notes down. Compatible. Um, gets along, however. That's not really what compatible means here with math. They get along, right? But they do kind of get along when you kind of think of like, you know, like a six plus four equals 10. That's just an example from like second grade when you're making a 10. Those are like compatible numbers. Quotients we know is the answer to a division problem. Answer to division problem. It's gonna put prob. Probe, there we go. An estimate, remember? It's that number that we always kind of think of about, not exact. Woo, doing so much writing already. Now, a sense of question says, how can you use compatible numbers to estimate quotients? So we're gonna actually be using compatible numbers. How can we use those so that we can estimate the quotients? Okay, cool, sounds great, except for one thing. I know, we can't do any of this unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says a horse's heart beats 132 times in three minutes. About how many times does it beat in one minute? Now, I don't know. This looks pretty challenging to me. Well, 132 times in three minutes? Will a horse's heart beat more or fewer than 132 times in one minute? Oh, uh, okay. Well, I can see where they're trying to make that kind of tricky. Well, obviously, it's going to beat fewer times, right? Fewer. How do I know that? Well, because... It's telling us right here, it beats 132 times in three minutes. That's over three minutes. That means that this number would have to be fewer, no doubt. This is what operation we'll use to solve the problem. Definitely thinking we're gonna need division. And how do I know it's division? Well, what I'm thinking here is, you know, if I've got like a total of 132 times in three minutes, okay, this is actually what I know. And now it's asking me a question about how many times. I kind of want to take this number here, which is our dividend. I want to take our dividend and I want to break it up into three equal pieces with one minute. So they'll kind of give me an idea. So that's how I know the operation is going to be division because I'm actually trying to make equal groups. That does say here you can use compatible numbers to estimate quotients. Okay, that's something to kind of keep in mind on this lesson is that uh, students sometimes really struggle on finding compatible numbers. So I'm always gonna bring you back to the simple fact how important it is to find something called basic facts. And the basic facts are gonna always be there in the times when you're feeling kinda low, like, oh, I wish I could figure this out. But then if you go back to your basic facts, things sometimes can become more clear. Here it just says compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to compute mentally. There you go. Good description. I'm glad they put the little definition there. So that's what compatible numbers. They get along to. Okay. But it's not like they're in a relationship. They're just numbers. But some numbers are related to each other, of course. Example one says, estimate. It says we have that 132 beats, remember, and in three minutes. And we want to know how it's going to be in one minute. So we're going to take 132 and we're going to divide it into three, yes, three equal minutes. And we're going to find out how many beats each minute would be. Step one, find a number close to 132 that divides easily by three. Use basic facts. So here, for example, like 12 divided by three, that's a basic fact. So we could use 120 divides easily by three. So you notice that we're used to three up here is our starting point. And we're trying to find what number three would be compatible with. And we just learned that it would be compatible with 12. However, why did you choose 12? Well, because it's 120. And do you see how close 120 is to 132? It's pretty close. All we did was just change the first, well, they take that back. No, we only changed the last two digits, but we changed the 13 to 12. That's what we did. So we looked at those first two digits and that's what they did here too, down below. 15 divided by three is also a basic fact. Why? Because 150 divides easily by three. So you can see that both of these work. When we estimate, we try to get our numbers as accurate as possible, but they are just that, estimates. Here it says, think, choose 120 because it is closer 
to 132. Okay, that makes sense to me. I We should choose that one for that reason. 150, 150 is a little bit off. So we're going to go to step two, which is the 120 is equal to 12 tens. Remember that from our last lesson, we had that. 12 divided by blah, blah, blah. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. That looks good. Okay, so 12 tens divided by 3 would equal 4 tens. So 120 divided by 3 equals 40 because we have that 10 on there. So a horse's heart beats about, about, keyword, letting us know it's an estimation, about 40 times a minute. So it's not going to be exact. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, my pen just took control of my hand. Yeah, that'll fix him. I took care of that guy. All right, so that's the top part. Let's move on to example two. Example two says, use compatible numbers to find two estimates that the quotient is between. Aha. So now we have 1,382 divided by five. Now this is where students can typically get pretty intimidated because we have a very large number. We have five and now we're trying to do estimating, but it's not as hard as you think. They, they do really well here. With Go math, they're putting step one. Find two numbers close to 1,382 that divide easily by five. Notice we're starting, we go to that divisor first. Let him be the guide. So the divisor is kind of like the guide to decide what should we change that number into. And you can see by looking here that the one and the three makes 13. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a 15, for example, or any other number that would work? In this case, they've chosen 1,000. So 10, that's the first two digits, divided by five is a basic fact, right? It equals two, we know that. So 1,000 divides easily by five. So what you need to do is see the connection with they chose 10 because five will go into 10 without a remainder. And now because our number is four digits long, we're just changing that 10 to 1000. That's all we're doing. So this is where students kind of get confused because we're looking at this part, the first two digits to look for the basic fact, but we can't forget that the number that we're really trying to change it into is the larger four digit number here. And then here you can see they chose 1500, which is 15. And that's what I saw probably the first thing, okay, was that one there, was the 15, because I saw five, and I knew five times three equals 15. So now it says 1,382 is between, obviously, it's between 1,000 and 1,500, okay? 1,382 divided by five is between, oh, it's gonna be between 200 and 300, because we had the two, and here's the three, and remember, we had that extra 100 part on there. So that's what our answer is gonna be, is 200, and 300 and that makes sense because five times 200 is that thousand that we had up above and then of course five times 13 or 300 is 1500 step two divide each number by five. Oh, so now i know why this got confused this was supposed to be like the very last thing that we did that's why i was kind of looking at that okay i'm sorry we skipped should have gotten this part and then right over here but i kind of kept going down oops i goofed okay so we'll fill this in step two says divide each number by five use place value so we had our 1000 so that's going to be how many hundreds i hope you said 10 hundreds right makes 1000 if you put them together 10 hundreds make 1000 10 hundreds divided by five is going to equal two hundreds or 200 written this way so now we come down below we have 1500 divided by five so if we were to write this number 1500 how many hundreds is 1500 i just said it 15 hundreds 1500s divided by 5 is going to equal to 300s or just 300. Page master. Okay, here we go. Share and show. Share and show. That's right. Get your math boards, you guys. Get those math boards. Here we go. Get those math boards out. All right. Now it says estimate. We have 1718 divided by 4. And then we have, I don't know which way I'm going here. Think. What number close to 1,718 is easy to divide by four? Oh, yes. We're going to be choosing two of them. Well, I would go down by one with my six because that would make 16. Four is compatible with 16. So what basic fact can you use? 16 divided by four. So here, 1,600 is close to 1,718. 1,718. Another basic fact, I'm just going to go up. Seven, eight, nine. I guess I'm gonna have to go all the way to 20 because that will be compatible with four because 20 divided by four is five. So we could also say that 2000 is close to 1718. I hope that made sense. This is really kind of review. So choose 1600 because it's closer to 1718. Okay, now we have it down here. We have our basic fact. 16 divided by four is four. 
So 1,600 then divided by 4 is going to be 400, right? Because we have those two tens there. So 1,718 divided by 4 is about, about 400. Okay, pretty simple. It says use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient. Okay, so remember the divisor is where we want to start. And I'm just going to circle these here. So you always want to kind of keep that in mind. It's just easier to find a number that's compatible with the divisor first. Numbers that are compatible with 9, yeah, you can see it. It's, it's actually right there, 45. Because I happen to know that 9 times 5 is 45. So that's a good compatible number. So rather than writing 45, I'm going to add on that 0 and I'm put that power of 10 there. So I have 450 divided by 9. So you can see it's very, very close. I found compatible numbers. And that's what this lesson was all about. How can we use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient? And this is what we're doing. Okay, it goes right back to our learning target. Now we have 1,509 divided by 3. Well, 3 is compatible with 15. These are easy, they're giving us. But we do have 1,500. I need to change that and put divided by 3. Now they're making it not quite as friendly. Now I just can kind of think about going up or down. If I go up 18, 19, that's not helping me out. Well, actually, that wouldn't help me out. But if I come down 16, that would work. Because 16 divided by 8 is 2. That is the basic fact. But I have another power of 10 there. I'm going to add that on. And now I just go ahead and put my 8. So 176 is pretty close to 160. I'd have to go all the way up to like, yeah, I'd have to go a ways up before I could get 8. It's going to be compatible. Number 5. Here we have a 7. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4 is 28. That's really close to 27. So I'm just going to change that to 28. But I, I need to make sure I add on that those two powers of 10. And all you have to do is you just need to make sure that if you're estimating this number, you're estimating the dividend here, ultimately for the goal of estimating the quotient. But you want to make sure that you have the same amount of digits because here you have a three-digit number. There's a three-digit number. Here's a four-digit number. Here's a four-digit number. You want to make sure you don't mess that part up. I would highly recommend that you just put the video on pause just and then work out these problems on your own and then kind of see how you did. These are estimates. So don't expect to get the exact same answer I get. It depends on how you're looking at the number. Like here, I don't see anything you need to change. It's just going to be 160 divided by 2. And I'm assuming, do I have to have the answer too? I guess it would be 80. Now I'm starting to wonder if I was supposed to do the ones up above because I did that one. Maybe I was. You, to estimate the quotient. Yeah, all I've done is kind of set it up. Well, this is just going to be 5, 50. So that one's 50. Here, we're going to have 500. Here we're going to have 20. And then here, oh, I didn't even finish this one, did I? <laughs> What's new, huh? Divided by 7 equals 400. Yeah, 400. Now I'm going to come back down again. So we'll try it again. 50, 49. Oh, that's really close. 490. So 490 divided by 7 because my basic fact makes that so easy. 7. Because 7 times 7 is 49. So it's going to be 70. Okay. Here are the 5. Look at the 14. I see the 15. 15 divided by 5. So that means I'm going to have 1,500 divided by 5, which is going to equal 300. Over here I have 26. 24 would work because 8 times 3 is 24. So if I have 2,400, 2,400 divided by 8, I'm obviously going to get 300. That's just going to be 8 times 3, 2,400. Cool. Use compatible numbers to find two estimates that the quotient is between. So that means we're going high and low. Two compatible numbers. Let me see here. I'm trying to think to go below 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48. I guess 48. 4,800 divided by 6, okay, is equal to 80, I mean, I'm sorry, 800, so that would be 1, and then the other one would be going up to 54, 5,400, so that would equal 900. So, thinking you saw how I did this one here, so it just, yeah, so that means our, our two estimates are the quotients in between here, so our answer is going to be 800 and something, it's going to be between these two numbers. Okay, that's kind of cool. So we'll do the same kind of thing here. First, I'll try to go on the low end. 17 doesn't work, but 16 does not. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. 12 works. So 1,200 would be the low end. And then the high end is going to be 18. Oh, yeah, 18, which is 1,800. So that's kind of the range. So 1,200 divided by 6 is going to equal 200. And that's going to be 200 through... I should put that dash there, 1,800, which is going to be 300. All right, so our quotient falls in between. This is kind of like what estimates allow you to do. They allow for you to estimate the number on the low. I think I actually mentioned this in another 
video and that would be like the, the low estimate and here's the high estimate just because we went up and down if we go down 11 we get to 10 doesn't help us but 9 works so now we're actually dropping down to 900 kind of an exception here because we have a four digit number here but we're doing that because we had to go low the other one going up definitely be 1200 so you can see 900 divided by 3 is going to equal 300 and then that's going to be through 400 because we have that 1200 divided by 3. Over here, going low, 20, definitely 2000 because I can see how that's compatible, the 20 and the 4. And now I'm going to go up here to 2400 because that's compatible. So here we're going to have 2000 divided by 4, which is going to be 550, actually 500. Yes. I had to double check my work to 20. Yes, 500. And going to go all the way to 600 because that's being 2400. Yep. So that's the range. Find two estimates. So I think I kind of did this. Okay. Boy, it's pretty challenging. Now we still have more. Mathematical practice number two says reason abstractly. Okay. Reason abstractly. We have algebra. Estimate to compare. Less than, greater than, or equal to. So in this case here, give myself an estimate. Ah, okay. So three is going to be compatible with 61. No. 60? Yes. So if I just change this to 600, 600 divided by 3 is just going to equal 200, right? Because 200 times 3 gets us back to 600. So here's my one estimate. Then my other one here, I have 58. You can't break 58 in 2, mm, but you want to know something? I'm going to say, let's go with 600, and the same thing happens. 600 divided by 2, though, in this case, though, is going to equal 300, a little bit higher. So then it says, estimate to compare. I guess I'm going to say that this one is less than that one. Guessing on that one there. The next one here, let's see, we have 4. Ooh, that's compatible with 36. I like that. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So you can say that's 9, but that's going to be that 1 power 10 there. So we have 360. So that works. Here we have 117 divided by 6. Mm, 11, not good, but 12. 12 would be good. So if we had 120 instead, that makes it so much easier. We end up with 2. We end up with 20. That's it. Just 20. Oh, this one here is definitely greater. So we're going to go this way. Sign changes. Last one. Now we have 2,718 divided by 8. I'm only interested in the first two digits for my basic fact. And 26, no, 20, 29, 30. No, that's going to 24. Going to have to bring it down to 2,400 divided by 8 is going to equal 300. So we have 300 here. On this side, the 96 could be split in half, but let's just make that an easy 1,000. Divide that by 2, we're going to end up with 500. And you can see the last one than that. Okay, my friends. I don't know. I think I like it. Oh, there's that music. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Again, another video here and gone. Poof. Like a little bubble just pops. Boop. Okay. Bubble. Okay. Anyway, enough said about that, my friends. Thank you so much for coming aboard. I'm so glad that you come and join me on my channel and you check out my videos. Hey, if you're not a sub yet, why don't you join this growing team of totally awesome fourth graders? That's right, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.